wanted to say welcome everyone. Welcome to LaSalle. Um, we're very happy to be able to have this event on campus tonight as part of the Philly Black Lives Matter week. Um, this year we have um, connections across the nation at, um, what do we have, Seattle, um, D.C., New York, Chicago, Baltimore, there are other cities who are participating, um, Newark, right, other cities, Omaha, I think, is trying to get on board, you know, so we have a lot of, of um, cities participating in, in, in the movement. Um, tonight, we're going to kick off our event with the film screening of Precious Knowledge, which addresses the issue of um, uh, ethnic studies um, as, as the bigger issues and um, what happened in Arizona, but then also um, across the U.S., kind of the broader conversation about what it means to, to teach um, histories, right, instead of the single story of history, single story of experience um, in schools. So um, I'm, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, I'm Laura Roy. I'm the chair of the education department here at LaSalle. And so some of our teachers, Edwin um, does a lot of work around um, issues of social justice and, and looking at both um, community and school and, and youth in those spaces. And so I think we're just going to be somewhat informal in our conversation about it. And I know that Edwin has a few things he wants to say. Um, I do want to say as a, as a teacher and teacher educator, um, you know, these issues are, are very important to me and, and I've been really thinking a lot about how we as um, a teacher ed department here at LaSalle can really um, address these issues in a better way. Um, recently, this connects to, to why we're here. Um, the, uh, if you don't know, the LaSallean kind of tradition, you know, is grounded in, in um, social justice. And um, there are universities and schools across the country and the nation that um, come from this LaSallean tradition. And I just returned on Friday from a racial justice colloquy where six um, LaSallean institutions got together, a small group of us, about 30, to talk about how we can um, really think about um, how our institutions are addressing, addressing the system of white supremacy, how are we dismantling um, uh, oppressive systems within the way that we tenure professors or don't, the way that we serve our student populations and our curriculum in all of these areas. So I also invite you as community members who care about these issues to please feel free to reach out to me. My card is up here. Um, we'd love to have input from anyone and everyone in the community who, who would like to help us hold ourselves accountable um, for, for addressing racial justice. And, and as a teacher who spent my whole life working with um, immigrant and refugee kids, you know, I think the more that we can, it, what, what's hard for me is I, I also grew up in a community that changed very quickly as a result of an influx of um, immigrants in a very small community and the conversations that were happening then are still happening now. And so I would like for us to find ways to move forward and actually um, make some lasting change. So I'll hand it over to Edwin and Isha. Um, uh, thank you for coming out. Um, I also um, actually don't want to say very much, but I also I do want to take a moment to recognize the land is Lene Lenape land, and that we are on indigenous stolen land, um, and that our communities are are bound up in that struggle um, continually. Um, and so, uh, your liberation is tied to my liberation, um, and so let us work together. Um, so I really, I mean, I think I'm, I'm humbled to always be, you know, in, in Maestro's um, <laughs> presence here. So um, I, you know, but I really want, um, and I'm humbled to be around all of this collective knowledge. So, um, I mean, for me, I, I really just want to, um, the, the one thing I will say just as an update, right, if people didn't know, right, is that um, in the Ninth Circuit, this, so the, the civil case continued on after um, the program in Tucson was dismantled. Um, and so um, uh, this past August, um, the Ninth Circuit ruled though that, um, and I actually, I'm like, I was like, I don't want to mess up the language. Um, 
uh, Justice Tashima said, or the Ninth Circuit judge wrote that the conservative lawmakers passed the ethnic studies restriction, quote, not for a legitimate educational purpose, but for an invidious, discriminatory racial purpose and a politically partisan purpose. Um, the decision was then, based on, on his statements, was that uh, what the state of Arizona had done was racist and discriminatory. Um, and so they were no longer allowed to ban um, a program like the Mexican American Studies program. Um, it's been on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a huge, huge, huge win. Um, the struggle now is what do we do? Um, and, um, you know, we're looking at a decade's worth of trauma, um, of racial state violence. Um, and how do we um, create uh, actions or continue to engage in actions of what uh, Native scholar Gerald Visenor talks about as notions of survivance, practices of survivance. So it's not just survival, but living beyond a survivable name. Um, and so what are, what's the work that's left to be done? And it's not just, I think, for the people of Tucson um, and the, the educators and the young people of Tucson to pick up the pieces. I think we all should hold ourselves accountable to thinking about how do we pick up the pieces? Um, how do we continue to restore and to heal and to transform our communities wherever we may be? Um, so that's, that's my two cents. Two cents. Um, uh, but I wanted to open it up and um, maybe we could, you know, I'm, I want to, you know, open it up to, to folks um, in terms of like what they think. Um, but I don't know, Ishmael, you had some thoughts that you wanted to just kind of. Yeah, just to start off the conversation. Um, so my name is Ishmael Jimenez. Um, I am uh, a teacher in the school district of Philadelphia. I also just started at the South recently. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been teaching the African American history course, which is a required subject in Philadelphia. And as you can see, it was modeled somewhat off the two side. Two the Arizona model. So um, I, I just want, really want to start this conversation off by also shaping it within its relationship to Black Lives Matter and Black History. A lot of the struggles and ideas and concepts of struggle and resistance within this society were developed through Black struggle. And so that connectedness that you even saw in the documentary of the teachers connecting those pieces together the, the, the cultural aspects of indigenous culture and even African culture are intertwined in that. And I think it speaks on a different wavelength. So like in Philadelphia, we're blessed enough to still have this as a required subject. And if one is done properly, the same thing that you saw in the video happens here. And, and ironically, one of my former students, Dr. Jonas Falk, I mean, is, is here right now. Well, I, I, I didn't just know the man was coming here. So uh, I just really wanted to preface that also, and that's the relationship with Black Lives Matter. And, and when we talk about Black Lives Matter, when we talk about you know Chicano and Latino uh, uh, heritage and cultural significance, we need to remind or remember that it's all about humanity. This, this gets us to a deeper sense of humanity, because let's be honest, this society wasn't built off of humanity and considerations for humanity. And what has brought humanity to these shores were actually people brought here and forced to be here or, or overtook him while being here. And fighting for that humanity is the story of us all. And all of us benefit. And if we don't know that, then all of us have, have lost that. So. The first was interesting just how they continuously Maybe it was outside of the documentary push or from the side of the class itself, and just how it was really at the any of the day class. That's one thing. The other thing that I found really fascinating in watching this was having taught in an American school in Egypt and having taught many students in universities here who went to American schools in other countries was even though those are private institutions, they're not government sponsored institutions that exist the same exact disconnection from the culture and the history and the language was consistently happening. So you're not allowed to speak anything but English. If you do get charged money or you get detention or you know whatever, the teachers constantly talking really, really terribly about the culture in which they were living in. 
um, and the ways in which, you know, it was this idea that American culture is so important and, you know, that's where we're going, but the ways in which the same exact ideology is being like, exported everywhere and has been going on at least 20 years in a private, in a private way, not government sponsored. Um, so I just thought that was, and it continues to happen. I mean, I'm hearing about it still the ways in which like the principal of the school that I used to teach at is like not taking into consideration at all the ecosystem of the school and like you know no I just want to remove you because like I don't like you or whatever and just the the same kinds of rhetoric and policies that exist on all these different levels happening within the school systems um, and I, I kind of wanted to just bring that up to demonstrate that like it's happening globally um, unfortunately and it's taken a you know, it's and, and you and I, I could see in my students like the disconnect that my, my students knew more about George Washington mm -hmm. than they did they did not know. I mean I think about this country or this this formation of this nation state as primarily premised on coloniality and enslavement. Right. Um, and so those kind of twinned coupled processes are ongoing, you know, and have, have been have been and continue to be and I think we see it, and we see it, I mean, most, for me as an educator, to see it continually happening every single day on young people um, is what, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's deadly. Um, and I think ultimately leads us to this kind of premature death um, that it takes just it's dehumanizing, right? It's what Freire and, and others have talked about is dehumanizing. And so um, I think, you know, that's just kind of what I was thinking about. And, and it's a global project. The imperial project is a global one. Um, and so for us to, to kind of, when we focus locally, we have to continue to think globally um, in, in terms of how the, the work that you're doing in your classrooms, the work that Ish is doing in his classroom, um, uh, the work that we're all doing in our classrooms, um, in our families, right? Down to the most, you know, our own self work, right? Is, is, um, is a kind of decision that we have to make whether or not we, we are willingly complicit with the Imperial Project or um, are we going to be finding ways to resist that? And, and I thought just real quick, uh, then I thought you to drag in. But, um, I, I just, and, you know, when we were talking about George Washington, you know, he took nine teeth out of his slaves and put it in his mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, like even just like little stuff like that yeah. is like left over and glossed over. Mm -hmm. So even when we talk about our George Washington, we don't want, I mean, I don't want that dude, you know. Um, <laughs> but also on, on top of that, I really just need to highlight like this the normalcy of whiteness as civilizer. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. progress is inevitable and the more likely we're able to copy and replicate current structures and systems is viewed as progress. But progress off of what and then what are the consequences? Mm -hmm. You know, this is the first time in history where, you know, a around the world we can talk to each other in a millisecond, right? But at the same time, we, in this society, in this country, have more the people on depression and, 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 and you know, antipsychotic pills that the, even though we got bliss on tap. So we need to look at this duality of experience and what we have everything we want, but we just ran past everything we need. Mm -hmm. and, and when we look at that as progress, as evolution, we lose the true circle of aspect of what indigenous uh, societies, African societies, as uh, uh, all these cultures that throughout world history informed us to even to the point where it was built off of over the last 500 years. So we need to not throw away that knowledge and, and that precious knowledge, not the documentary. Great way to uh, expose people to the ongoing battles It's a holistic battle. It's not just emotional, it's physical, because all these things take us over, and we do leave a traumatic um, impact. One thing I found extremely interesting was how our body and how much cognitive dissonance it takes to protect racial supremacist foundations, yeah. the founding fathers. How that kind of crazy, right? It was like, what do I do? Like, just, it makes you think how deep rooted and insane they actually sound and not you know not they you know because there there are people of color who sound just as insane too right um but to, to 
twist his words in the court of the matter and say that was racist when he legit said something else. He was, it's on camera. You can't even use it on camera in court. And that's, I think in context, let's remember Arizona was the last one to honor Martin Luther King's yep. birthday as a holiday. None of this surprised me. So I thought what was great was the end, the, uh, the scope of looking at how it played out with the students, with the teachers, with administration, with the uh, community members. The one guy was protecting us, don't come across my border. It's a sidewalk. You don't even own it. Like legitimately, you don't own it. But that's the psyche of trying to protect something because colonialism, which is cousin to imperialism, teaches you to have an inflated ego anyway, and everything is mine, 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 kind of like what Tupac was saying about Trump. Mm -hmm. It's mine, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. And back to what Ishmael was saying, if we can get back to the ethos of our value system across the board, where we don't worship celebrity, and we don't look at fame, and we, we, we kind of shift things the way they've been rigged against the people, then we can start making some headway, but it's gonna take some work. And it's going to take a lot of strong engagement with wow. young people and not reaching them just here, but reaching them here. Because if you look at what played out last night with the, with the Patriots and the Eagles, <laughs> you have Belichick, who's a systems guy. I don't care. It's my way. He even benched one of his yes, best yes, players yes, with no regard for how this is going to play out with the psyche of his team. You look like you betrayed somebody who's been giving it all. Right? He's a hero in Boston. Where Doug Peterson is more like, he's a heart guy and a management of character type of person. Right, right, right. And if we can get, if we can say the systems don't just work like, right, you right, need right. systems, you need structure, you need order in some way, right? But where do you do it and find a happy medium and do it in a responsible way where you ask you can do it in a restorative ways too because we live in a punitive culture. Mm -hmm. It's going to work late enough, multiple times, there's going to be a punishment. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no talking to, or you do certain things, you're fired. Mm -hmm. Right? So we watched Trump for years, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. What do you think they were going to get fired? Mm -hmm. Mega Man. Mm -hmm. You proved it to us for years. We called it entertainment, and that was everybody's real life. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> so how do we get young people to teach them how to dream again? Teach them how to believe again? Teach them that their imaginations are valuable? That's right. And teach them that their visions can actually actualize into something that can change the world? Today I was doing a quote with my kids. I do a quote every single day. And it was uh, Audrey Lord, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you, you, uh, you cannot dismantle master's house using master's tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we laid out the foundation. So you know, a house needs a foundation to build upon. So what was master's house built upon, right? As a, as a metaphor, right? It's built off of racialized exploitation. So the current house that we exist on is built from that. So we can use the tools all we want, but we won't be able to dismantle the house, especially if we use the same tools of uh, fear, of uh, indoctrination, of lies, of, of mistruths, untruths. I mean, we got a situation where now people don't even can tell you the difference between truth and untruth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're having a situation where I can't even have a conversation about what racism is because it's so convoluted and diluted. People think it's like, it's like I always say, it sounds like two 10-year-olds debating the merits of capitalism. That's part of colonialism, though. Yes. To make it complex to give you a lot of words to yeah. confuse. Right? Confuse the conversation. Exactly. So, so, at, at, so as a result, we're not actually dealing with racialized exploitation. We're not dealing with the root problem which created a situation that we exist in. We even have folks saying that you can use Master's tools, say, of a business model, and think that you might beat him at his own game for a little bit, and I'm quoting Andre Lord right now. But at the end of the day, you won't create genuine change. And I think like th this, these conversations have been happening for generations and generations. You know what they did in uh, Arizona. You know we're doing it in Philly. There's no coincidence that my and my sons go to Logan, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would say I'm a crazy parent for sending my kids to Logan Elementary. You know, but I I mean me and my wife were like, hopefully everything will be good. Everything at home stable, right? Right. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a that's dream, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, but my first grader son told me throughout the year when they were going over the holidays, he's like, yeah, we're going over Switzerland and Holland and all these other places. I'm like, when are you, when are you guys going to do a country in Africa? 
And I was like, I should teach you that. And mind you, Logan's like 99.8% black, right? And so my son asked him, asked the teacher, and the teacher's like, oh, we'll do that when we do Kwanzaa. And, and my mentality is like, number one, Kwanzaa was made up in 1969 in LA. So we're talking about two different things. Um, and so like, I'm going to send an email then. And then he came home last week with a booklet of Af uh, for African Black History Month. And in Black History Month, there's a little segment about why we celebrate and about how Gerald Ford made it a holiday. And that, and quoted Gerald Ford saying that this has been neglected for so long that we need to talk about it. And then nothing, nothing about Carter G. Woodson. And I bet you half, half the people in here, unfortunately, have never heard of Carter G. Woodson. And he's the reason why we even had Black History Month, which started off the Negro Achievement Week in 1926. So like my son at the school, so I sent a, I sent an angry email to him. Right. <laughs> I didn't call him racist, you know, I'm, I'm aware. Um, and the principal told me today that she called her crime. Oh my God. And that I need not to directly talk to her and if I have concerns to talk to her, to the to the uh, principal first. What I try to. And, and see, this is, this is what I'm talking about here. I can't even have an honest conversation with my child's teacher about what is being taught, not to my, just to my son, but to the other kids in the class. That's a hot, sloppy, stinky mess. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, you just hit on it. I think for me, um, education continues to be a terrain of struggle. Um, and I mean, we're losing every which way. Um, and, it's, and it's not just about my individual kids, it's not about Ish's individual kids, it's about all of the children, right? All of the young people. and and you know the kind of damage is being done to them every single yeah. day and so you know what are the foundations right uh, yeah. you know to go back to audrey lord to sister audrey right you know what are the foundations that would allow us to think otherwise yeah. right to work otherwise from what the master's tools have kind of led us to thinking is the common sense thing the right thing to do the course of action to take um, when it's the complete opposite that we probably need to be doing. Yeah. So. And you can even think about the normative of whiteness that they even right. keep on coming up in the jaw like, that's not American. Right. right. Americans right. about right. individualism. Right. 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 That people tend to tribalism, which is primitive. Yeah. You know, again, back to that evolutionary type of like mentality that somehow mm -hmm. we're making progress by becoming and disregarding right. who we are. So I, I just, I have to say yeah, that. So I kind of want to. I was thinking about that story because I already know what's going on with you. <laughs> yes, I. But also related to in in the documentary, they said that the teacher said he had to undo mm -hmm. ten years mm -hmm. of miseducation and right. yeah. So what can we do as a society to be sure that these messages and these narratives that culturally relevant curriculum is for available for all children right here in this city. And this and I think it shouldn't just be in public school because I put the Catholic school too was indoctrinated with a whole bunch of craziness and it took me 40 years to make sense. <laughs> so one of my sisters chose to send her daughter to school where every time something go down, she yep. said, you go down to the school and talk to the nun. Yep. My kids go to public school and I'll go down there. You know, anybody know, no, I go to the school board right But like, what can we do? to kind of change these systems and, and also someone talked about us as people of color also with this assimilation mm -hmm. crap that my parents did as well. I never quite assimilated to the whole system. But you know we have teachers that are fully assimilated into this system so when you have these conversations you get white tears and or, 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 or black attitude because it goes back both ways. So what can we do to kind of shift that narrative because I think that more of us need to come together and say this is not right. I think that the education and the knowledge that we're teaching kids should be relevant to their community. So my family over at Munoz Madden, they should have more culturally relevant, you know, shared experiences bigger than George Washington. Well, and, Isn't that who they mentioned in the yeah, yeah, George, George Washington? Yeah, and then Ben Franklin, <laughs> who was a <laughs> well, and, and Benjamin Rush, he believed that black people were dying off and he used a person who had an albino and brought him around saying, look, black people are dying off, we just civilized them. They won't last. They're colored, they're skin color. They will become white. And they got a high school named after them. Right. Now, that is a real sick reality. And so, like, one thing I would say this week, this Black Lives Matter week, and especially that it's national, we got 20, over 20 cities having similar conversations across the country right now over this. You know, and we have demands. More black recruitment of black teachers, 
right. you know, we have yeah. anti-racist trainings know. for everybody that deal right. with students, right? And we also have a focus on restorative practices. Not not that, you know, right. stuff that they tell us, the cookie cutter model, right. but the real deal, holy field type of thing where we look at our children not as aggressors or threats, but humans right. that make mistakes that are growing, that are learning. And I think that's where we begin. But we also need to be honest about we're not what what's, what exists now is not all good. Right. And, and a lot of folks, you know, like I teach African American history, which is a required course. A lot of folks come in that, John, the only thing they know about black people is Meek Mills and maybe like a Jet Magazine that, you know, issue. And that's a, that's a sad, unfortunate truth. And it's a required subject, so they're misinforming children right from jump. And they're not taking any opportunity to educate themselves. I mean, King, Martin King warned us about that towards the end of his life. So like, it's like, again, I feel like we're continuously having the same conversations and at the end of the day I think a, a lot of people used to know in this society that the truth is you know black people in America were never meant to be free. I don't care what race you are, if you don't know that, acknowledge that and realize it, then you probably have anti-black sentiments which is a reflection of what the society is built upon but then that's also tied to Latinos, that's also tied to, you know what I mean, all, all uh, Cambodians, Vietnamese, you know, and if we, we want to talk about the racial spectrum. Different, different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different mentalities different mentality today. It seems hard. It's hard. It's hard. It, seems it seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge.